Imagine for a moment a flash of light in a major city. This isn't a full-blown nuclear war, but a terrorist dirty bomb. The real weapon isn't the explosion itself, it's the invisible cloud of radioactive fallout that follows. Carried on the wind, it silently poisons everything it touches, rendering buildings, roads, and homes uninhabitable for decades. An entire metropolis could become a ghost town, defined by an enemy you can't see, taste, or smell. For decades, this has been a nightmare scenario for governments worldwide, a threat with no real, immediate countermeasure. The goal of a dirty bomb isn't just destruction, it's to create lasting fear and paralysis. A single event could contaminate dozens of square miles and affect tens of thousands of people. But what if you could stop that cloud in its tracks? From behind a veil of military secrecy, China has revealed what it claims is a defense system that could do just that. Researchers from institutions linked to the PLA Rocket Force say they've developed a method to literally knock nuclear fallout out of the sky. This isn't science fiction, but a potential new reality in radiological defense, one that could rewrite the rules, but also raises some very serious questions. So, what is this supposed game changer? It's called a High Altitude Rapid Response Suppression System, and its entire strategy depends on a tiny, critical window of time. Just two minutes. From the moment a dirty bomb detonates, a plume of superheated gas, smoke, and deadly radioactive particles starts rising and expanding. In those first moments, the cloud is concentrated and vulnerable. But after about two minutes, it can rise too high and spread too wide, getting swept up by atmospheric winds and becoming an unstoppable environmental disaster. This is where China's system is designed to intervene. The concept is to strike the cloud while it's still forming. To do this, researchers propose a network of pre-positioned launch sites around major cities and sensitive facilities, like nuclear power plants. These sites would house rockets armed not with explosives, but with a special chemical payload. The whole system is built for one thing, speed. An advanced sensor network would detect the blast and its radiological signature, triggering an instant alert. Within 120 seconds, rockets would launch, not at an enemy, but at the cloud itself. The idea is to turn the principles of weather modification, like seeding clouds to make rain, into a tool of radiological defense. Launching rockets at a cloud is one thing, but how does that actually stop invisible radiation? The secret is in the payload. The system doesn't destroy the radiation, it forces it to fall to the ground before it can spread. The rockets are designed to inject special chemical agents directly into the radioactive plume. The lead researcher described the process as using adsorption, clustering, and coagulation. Think of it this way. The radioactive cloud is made of countless microscopic particles, so light they can float in the air for days. The chemical agents act like a binding agent, forcing these tiny particles to stick together. As these clumps form, they quickly become too heavy to stay airborne. Gravity takes over, and the radioactive material falls straight down. Instead of a cloud that can travel for hundreds of miles, you get a highly concentrated hot zone of contamination right around the blast site. This doesn't get rid of the radiation, but it contains it, turning a potential city-wide catastrophe into a much more localized and manageable cleanup operation. Now, here's the important part. According to the Chinese team's simulations, the effectiveness is staggering. Their models showed that at just 50% efficiency, the high-risk contamination zones are drastically reduced. At a claimed 90% suppression efficiency, a level they say is achievable within that two-minute window, the most dangerous zones almost completely disappear. In theory, the nightmare scenario is neutralized. On the surface, this technology looks like a monumental breakthrough for civil defense. A system that can prevent widespread contamination could save lives and secure critical infrastructure. The researchers themselves say it's of great significance for gaining strategic initiative in battlefield nuclear safety and winning international public support. It positions China as a responsible power developing tools to protect its people. 
But, as with any major military technology, there are deeper, more unsettling questions. Is this system purely defensive? Consider the flip side, a technology that can clean up radioactive fallout could, in theory, make using radiological weapons seem less risky. A nation with this ability might be tempted to use tactical, dirty bombs, believing they can contain the fallout to the immediate battlefield and avoid international backlash. A defensive shield could become an offensive enabler. Then there's the question of credibility. All of the data we have comes from computer simulations and tests run by the Chinese military itself. The system has not been proven in a real-world dirty bomb event. Is this a functioning, deployable system, or a piece of sophisticated propaganda? Announcing a capability like this, real or not, sends a powerful message about China's technological strength and acts as a form of deterrence. Finally, the research specifically focuses on dirty bombs. The scientists admit it's unclear if this method would work against a true nuclear explosion, which creates a much hotter, larger, and higher-reaching mushroom cloud. But if the principles can be adapted, it could signal the start of a new arms race, not just for bigger weapons, but for defensive shields that could destabilize the long-standing balance of nuclear terror. If one nation believes it can neutralize fallout, the old doctrine of mutually assured destruction starts to fray. The announcement of China's radiological suppression system is a pivotal moment. It's a testament to human ingenuity, applying weather science to a modern warfare problem. If it works as advertised, it could make the dirty bomb, a potent weapon of terror, far less strategic. But this technology also presents a paradox. It blurs the line between defense and offense, raises tough questions about the future of radiological warfare, and could kick off a new race for defensive supremacy among global powers. It's a tool designed to contain a disaster that could, inadvertently, make starting one more thinkable. This technology could rewrite the rules, but the critical question isn't just if it works. It's how it will be used, and by whom. It promises security from a nightmare, but it may also be ushering in a new, more complex era of global conflict. What are your thoughts? Is this a breakthrough for global security that will make the world safer? Or is it a dangerous development that could make radiological conflict more likely? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to stay ahead of the curve on how future technology is changing our world, make sure to subscribe.